Hello everybody. Right, I've been meaning to do this one for a little while now, and there's so much to it, what I've decided to do is I've kind of decided to split it. And it's basically to do with the rules of when you're driving a truck. And you've got to comply with two different sets of rules. You've got to comply with your drive time rules, and you've got to comply with your work time, work time directive. Yeah, rules, that's right, work time directive, WTD, rules. Um, we're going to do the work time separately because I'm still trying to get my head around certain bits of it. I'm going to have to ring Daniel about it. But the driver's thing, I think I've kind of got. Now, this got to bear in mind, and there's going to be a load of you out there go, that's not actually quite right, Pete, because it's not actually over two weeks, it's over four weeks. This is going to be oh, thing out of there, the Janet and John version, all right? This is, this is the Janet and John version of basically how it works. It's not 100%, but it's pretty much there, and how I do it. So, this is how I run my lorry and how I fathom things out so that I don't get infringements, I don't go over, you don't get the red light, you don't get the paperwork of death. So starting with you've got two you've got four different sets of technology comes in here. Right. So you've got steering wheel hammers, bed and sandwiches. That's not true. What you've actually got, you've got drive, other work, rest and POA. Lots of people say POA is pointless. There is a point to it. There's only one I've found so far, but once again, I'm sure the people that know much better than me on um, on, the, on, the, on the Sony Q&A will tell me. Now, when you're in the tacker, I didn't notice it first of all. I was quite, how does drive work? Drive kicks in automatically. So when you're driving, the steering wheel will come up. That will log your driving hours. When you stop, the hammers come on. It assumes that you're on other work unless you tell it otherwise then you flick the button on the taco there that says uh number one and it will flick between hammers rest and period PI period of availability so the long and short of it is well I have, I have to write all this down even though I know it I've got to, have to write it all down so I don't miss anything um in any in any given week you can drive for and there are exceptions but we'll come to that you can drive nine hours a day except for twice you can drive 10 hours a day so that's kind of what they're trying to get at there is that you should set your day up for driving nine hours but we understand that sometimes days would overrun your 10th hour is theoretically i believe kind of like an emergency hour but they don't always work out that way because sometimes that's the hour you need to make the job like you know so um and you can drive for up to four and a half hours before you have to have a 45 minute break but you can split that break so within the first four and a half hours of driving um then you you can have a 15 minute break followed by a 30 minute break so you could drive for two hours have a rest for 15 minutes drive for another just under two and a half hours have a rest for 30 minutes they also recommend you make your breaks 16 31 and 46. Now I've heard people say, no, that's not the rules. It's 15, 30, but it covers you in case for some reason the taco clicks back or something like that. It just shows that you haven't shot off early. And for the sake of one minute, I tend to do that. So you do it your way, but I tend to do it that way. Now you don't have to do four and a half hours, four and a half hours, then an hour. It's uh, those nine hours can be split any way you like. And if you've got if you've got one of your two hours, one of your two days where you do ten hours, they can be split any way you like. So the way it often works for me, I may often go to my first pickup. That might be an hour away. Open up the curtain, say to the fork truck driver, I'm going on break. Get fifteen minutes there, and then I know that within the next three and a half hours, I've got to have a thirty-one minute break. I have a thirty-one. Minute. I might then drive for another two hours. Get it off, get outside, and clear my, clear my driving time. So I now driven for three hours. I've had 46 minutes or 40 because I've done a, a 16 and a 31, 47 minutes worth of break. I have now still got seven hours driving time left. And within the next four and a half hours, I have to have another 45 minutes. For me, it's 46. So you could do three hours and then get your breaks accumulated, or you could do three hours, have a 45 minute break. An hour, have a 45 minute break, four hours, four and a half hours, on somewhere in the mean, two hours, 15 minutes, two hours, 30 minutes, you still have half an hour left. Your day's sort of clocking ahead of you, but 
that's the way you can do it. I tend to, either, rather than going four and a half, four and a half an hour, I tend to go, I mean, if you only got to drive for nine hours in a day, you could do one full job, theoretically, pick it up, you might not be able to take a break. You might have to get it on with a pallet truck or something like that. Finish your first job within the first four and a half hours, have a 46 minute break, pick up your next job and drop that one off and get home within the next four and a half hours. You've only got to have that break in one day. This is on drive time. This is not on work time. This is on drive time. So like I say, you can split your breaks. You've got to have 40, 45, I recommend 46, or 15, then 30. You can't do 30, then 15. As Godzilla said, I come unstuck with that one. No, this is very straightforward. You either have 45 minutes or 15, then 30. You can't do it the other way round. Also, in any given week, this is kind of the way they set you up. You work five days. After you've done five days, you theoretically have got to have two days off. So you basically work Monday to Friday, you have the weekend off. Or you might not be that lucky. You might have to work the weekends and you might have Monday, Tuesday off. That doesn't matter. But every five days, you've got to have 45 hours away from the truck. So you can't go and mess around with the truck or anything like that. That's your break. But every Every once every two weeks you can work six days. Now this isn't quite right. It's every four weeks you can pay it back. But I'm giving you the Janet and John version, the keep it simple version, right? So um, every two weeks you could do a Saturday if you wanted to. The difficulty with this one is if you're doing your full hours because you can only drive for 56 hours in any one given week. That's two lots of 10 and four lots of nine. So if you're driving your capacity all the way through, if you pull a heavy week one week, the next week, because you can only drive 90 hours across two weeks, you can only drive 36 hours, that's four days. If you're not pulling your capacity, it kind of works all right. Like me, I don't pull my capacity. I very rarely do a 10 hour driving day. Yesterday, I think I did five hours. So I theoretically could do five days a week and then do a Saturday every two weeks for a bit of extra bunts. The problem with this on the exchange is you don't get back loads and I've got stuff to do on a Saturday. I've got driver's cards to do. I've got I've got YouTube to do. So for me, I tend to keep it simple. I tend to just do Monday to Friday, have Saturday, Sunday off, do all my work at home on a Saturday, um, you know, bits and pieces, paint the view, cut the edges and stuff like that, have Sunday off, back on it on a Monday. So we're onto that one as well. Um, so yeah, the way I do it, right, is... Keep it simple, right? So you start your day, what I tend to do, I've got, I've got this little pad. There you go, and I'll write on that, there we go. And it's got a steering wheel that tells me what time I started. I started at quarter to six, and it's got a steering wheel that tells me that I've currently driven for three hours and 33 minutes, and I've had my break. So now, and you can click your taco down, if you put the down arrow on the taco, it will tell you, um, our, 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 your drive time, your rest time, and all that kind of stuff, so you know where you are. You've got a little rest of the hammers and all that kind of stuff. Um, so now I now know, on a 10-hour day, or on a 9-hour day, I've got 3.33, so I've got, on a 10-hour day, 6.66. On a 5-hour, on a 9-hour day, 5.66. Is that right? 33? No. Idiot. Uh, call it call it three and a half hours. Four. I've even got five and a half. I can't do the mess. Four and a half or five and a half hours left to drive. But what I will do now, once I, I get myself sorted, I'll go and pick up my next job. And I know that I'll, I'll keep looking at that at four and a half hours, trying to work out where it goes. And then keep my brakes in between, keep myself inside the time. So that, that kind of was a bit vague, wasn't it, really? But yeah, so if you work on the fact you're going to be driving for nine hours, playing your day. And if your first pickup is going to be like an hour away, you think, well, it's probably going to take them 15 minutes to load me. So I'll park it up there, open the curtain, turn around the fork truck driver, say, am I all right there? If they say, yeah, say, fine, I'm going on break. I'm not moving it unless there's a fire. You don't normally have to do that, in fairness. Just open the curtain, or we'll put it on a bay, open the door. Sometimes it, it's, you really should be in the passenger seat, not the driver's seat. It's because... Um, they can get you if you're in the driver's seat, but you're on brake in the passenger seat. So you can put it on a bay, open the doors, put it on a bay, sit in the passenger seat, you put it on brake, get your brake in. You clear your day quicker. Um, and, then, and, then, and then just, I, I tend to do five days a week, I have weekends off. So that way I'm always inside my 45 hour driving time. I'm, I'm very rarely do go over nine hours a day. I get, you do two jobs a day, get your first job on, get it unloaded, get your brakes in, get your second job on, get it unloaded, get home. And that tends to be the way it tends to work. Two jobs a day is enough. Start trying to put, and also, I don't tend to go more than 
150 miles away from my house. Because by the time you get there and you get it off and you've got to find one coming back and it's gone over there, you haven't got time to get there and get back in one day. Unless sometimes, like today, I'm going to have a whopper, but I won't get home. It's, it's uh, Lenny Henry Hotel tonight, or um, fold down bed, depending on what time I get finished. So yeah, if you work on, don't go over 150 miles, and um, or you or something you you want to do too. as the day pings over you might want to go for shorter jobs but that's the way I tend to do it. Finally, something else to add. Now I said on this before I said POA. A lot of people say not a lot of point of POA. There is one particular time when POA comes in handy. So say for example you've done your first job, all right, and you know on your second job you might have like a two hour wait. Now you can do that three times with your, with your, you can either put it on rest for two hours, if you put it on rest for two hours it will clear all your driving time, or you can put it on rest for 45 minutes, 46 minutes, 48 minutes, 50 minutes, drive around the corner and get a paper, then put it on rest again, which then means you're clocking up 15, 16 minutes in the next four and a half hours. That 48 minutes have cleared your previous four and a half hours. In the next four and a half hours, you have to take a 45 minute break, but you can split it to 15 or 16 and 31. So if you then drive around the corner and get a break in for 16, 17 minutes, that means in the next, once you get your next job, somewhere along the line in the next four and a half hours, you've only got to have 30, 31 minute break. But if you're still going to be sitting there for another three quarters of an hour, you've either got to put it on hammers which then starts cutting into your work time day, or put it on rest, which will clear the driving time again for the last four or five hours, but won't count towards the next one. I don't think it might. You have to fill me in on that one. But if you do 18 minutes, and then you put it on POA, period of availability, um, that 15 minutes, 16 minutes will stand. Now that's how I see it. I don't tend to use POA very often. I tend to, the way I work it is if I'm driving, I'm driving. If I'm physically unloading, I'm unloading. And if I'm not doing either of those two things, I'm on break. Um, period availability is also stated that you can only put it on POA if you actually know how long you're going to be off for. So they go, right, you're finishing that at 11, we'll need you back here at 4. Then you can have it on POA. Um, obviously, if you're not doing other rest, not, and that, that's it, not, but while you're in the meantime, I need you to drive the fork truck. That doesn't count. Then you're working. But if, you, if you're just sitting around waiting, that's POA. This is one of the few times I've got to use it, actually, because I know that I'm going on that bay over there at 11.30. So I've actually I've cleared my driving time. I've had a break. So in my next four and a half hours, I've already had my 15, 16 minute break. And I'm on POA now, so it doesn't count in my day. That's my way of doing it. I'm sure that there probably there might be a second video to this when everybody tells me everything that I've just done wrong. But that's the way I do it, and I scan my own cards and I don't get infringements, and that's the way I run my truck. Two jobs a day. Don't go too far, don't unless you're gonna stay out. If you're gonna go to Newcastle, count on the fact you're gonna get a hotel for the night. If you're gonna go from Dunstable to Nottingham, you should get something you Dunstable to Nottingham, then something coming back. It might even be short. It might be. It might be catering to. I don't know, Watford. Who knows? But that's the way I do it. Be interested to see how you do it. That's kind of my take on drivers' hours. In the meantime, fire it all up on the Sunday Q and A. Everything that I've done wrong, and take care. Take money.